Hey guys, Quinny again from Micrographics Application Engineer. Um, normally I give uh, assistance and advice and some tips and tricks on Plant 3D, um, but I'm also fairly decent at using AutoCAD as well. In fact, that's where I actually started from. So, and also Plant being a, well, backboning of AutoCAD itself, which helps with people familiarity. So. Just to move on from that, um, now that I've actually got my microphone recording, unlike last time, which I didn't. So, <laughs> moving swiftly along. A funny issue that we normally get in AutoCAD, especially in the 2D um, side, that's really annoying, is when we're having to deal with Z values. Um, meaning that normally when we're drawing in AutoCAD 2D, we are only interested in the X and the Y. So in other words, the X axis and the Y axis forming the XY plane. We're not really supposed to be, if we're drawing plane 2D, we're not talking about 3D, just 2D, we, we don't want to have the Z values. And how these Z values normally crop in is when people are, they're not paying attention, they're drawing fast, and especially when they're bringing in other information, so other blocks and other parts of drawings from other um, from other providers or even from themselves that they didn't realize that it had a Z value. I lovingly term it as being um, infected with the Z value because you only need one drawing to have this and it's amazing how far it propagates. So getting back to looking at this and how we fix it. So firstly, if you take a look at our screen here, we have got a just a square with a whole bunch of lines and stuff going through and it looks okay from the top and this is normally indicative you don't see any issues but now the problem is if I were to try and run maybe a polar array and array this uh, arc that we've got going on and we try and snap the center oh wait we can't maybe we need to use a override to get the center or the intersection but wait we can't get that intersection snap for some reason. What's going on here? Maybe apparent? Oh, not even apparent's working. Oh, we actually did manage to get it with the apparent intersection snap, but that's because of it being apparent. But we shouldn't need to do that. And we'll it'll become painfully obvious that when we orbit around, what's actually happened here? You notice that these this entire thing is as we like to say in Afrikaans, dear my God. Well, not that I'm <laughs> very Afrikaans, but it's basically broken. So how do we flatten this? We, or fix this? We could use, as I just said, there's a command called flatten that we can use, but though this can be a bit of a twitchy command to use. Number one, it's relevant of the face you're looking at. So if I was looking over here at the side and I would use a flatten, it would flatten, but in basically the way that I'm looking at and we'll try and flatten it down and that may not be what we want and sometimes flatten doesn't work very well there's another way we can do this though if we select everything and we go into its properties we then have the option to well normally if you were selecting um, individual parts we'd actually have the option to adjust the Z value. So just to quickly show you what I'm talking about, if I select one of the lines and I go into its properties, you can see that we've got Z. Oh, so if I took this four and I change the four to zero and the other Z, ah, there we go. So we've got a start Z and an end Z because line has got two values for its end point and its start point. If I were to orbit around now, you can actually see this line is now sitting on the Y axis. So it's exactly on that line. In fact, if I were to flip to one of the faces and orbit around, you can see it's there. So we can actually do this instead of doing it for line for line, we can do this on mass. And that's what I was just quickly showing you now. If I select all of these and go to my properties, you'll see it says all. So this is why I roll back a little bit just to quickly explain the back end. But if we use a drop down here, we can select lines. And you'll see it says varied everywhere. This is also a good way to check if it does have a Z value because if it says varies, you know it's wrong. Because if we use drop, if we click on 
one of the Z's, like NZ over here, and we type zero. You'll notice immediately what happens in the side window there. And if I change the start to zero, you'll notice bonk, all flips down. And lastly, arc. If we also change the uh, Z's of the arc, it pops up. How cool is that? So yes, you can use a flatten command, but sometimes it's um, uh, it it can be a bit finicky. Using this method, we can actually force everything down to the zero Z, and you'll notice once we select everything again, it's all sitting at zero 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 on our Z and zero on our Z. Thanks guys, I really hope this does help you out in trying to flatten some of your drawings, especially the nightmare ones that do occur every now and again. And you'll notice that if I do now try and use my intersection snap, it does work. Just going to quickly show you that. Well, thank you guys. Hope you have a good one. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up. Otherwise, have a good day. Cheers, eh? Bye.